Here are today's top stories. The Department of Justice begins its probe on the tax evasion charges against Rappler. The Philippine National Police asserts readiness against threats by the New People's Army this coming Barangay and SK elections. The Department of Tourism pushes to meet its 7.4 million tourist arrival goal despite the closure of Boracay. And Malacanang recognizes a Filipino journalist who won a Pulitzer Prize for his reportage on the war on drugs. Good day. I'm William Theo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. The Department of Justice is starting its probe on the tax evasion complaint against social media company Rappler. The online news site reportedly owes the government over 130 million pesos in taxes. Here is our report. The Department of Justice will start the preliminary investigation on the tax evasion complaint against Rappler Holdings Corporation and its officers. The Bureau of Internal Revenue, or BIR, says the company is liable for allegedly failing to pay income taxes and VAT amounting to about 133 million pesos for the year 2015. Assistant State Prosecutor Zenomar Machacon Caparo summoned the respondents to appear at the preliminary investigation scheduled to begin on April 24 and May 7. Based on the BIR complaint filed last March 8, RHC purchased common shares from Rappler Incorporated worth about 19 million pesos. Then it was issued and sold Philippine Depository Receipts, or PDRs, to two foreign firms worth over 181 million pesos. The BIR says RHC used the same common shares it purchased from Rappler as the underlying share of the PDRs for profit and transmitted economic rights to the PDR holders. The agency explained that RHC is subject to income VAT and VAT. However, the annual ITR and VAT returns for 2015 does not reflect IT and VAT from the PDR transaction. Last January, the Securities and Exchange Commission, or SEC, revoked the Certificate of Incorporation of Rappler Incorporated and RHC allegedly for violating the Constitution by allowing foreign entities in a supposedly Filipino-owned media company. Rappler filed a petition before the Court of Appeals seeking to stop the implementation of the decision by the SEC. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Rom Dulfo. The DOJ circular preventing former President and now Pampanga Representative Gloria Macapagal-Arroyo from leaving the country in 2011 to seek medical treatment was declared unconstitutional by the Supreme Court. SC spokesman Theodore Te said the High Court unanimously voted in declaring the circular issued by Justice Secretary and now detained Senator Laila de Lima as unconstitutional. The petitioner said de Lima violated the right to travel by turning down Mrs. Arroyo's plea to be allowed to seek medical treatment abroad for her rare bone disease. De Lima also violated the separation of powers by co-equal branches of government by refusing to implement the SC's temporary restraining order. In November 2011, immigration officials prevented the Arroyo couple and several aides from leaving the country upon the directive of De Lima. Arroyo was supposed to seek medical treatment in Singapore, Spain, and possibly in Germany for her hypoparathyroidism and metabolic bone disorder. The Sandigan Bayan 5th Division rejected the urgent motion filed by lawyers of alleged pork barrel scam Queen Janet Limnapoles to be placed under the custody of the Witness Protection Program or WPP. The court, which earlier denied Napolis' petition for bail for her plunder charge, found it questionable to place her under provisional coverage. The Sandigan Bayan indicated that the Bureau of Jail Management and Penology should be in charge of her security at Camp Bagong Diwa if indeed these are threats against her. The Department of Justice, meanwhile, distanced itself from former Secretary Vitaliano Aguirre's decision to place Napoles under witness protection. The DOJ said it will not give Napoles the luxury of demanding for protective custody. The PNP is prepared to counter any acts of terror or violence by the New People's Army in the coming Barangay and SK elections. Outgoing PNP Chief Ronald De La Rosa said 
All security preparations are in place for the elections on May 14, which will be implemented by incoming chief Oscar Albayalde. Despite having no reports of security threats, the PNP expects the NPA to take advantage of the elections to disrupt the peace and order situation. The PNP has identified 5,744 barangays in its watch list of election hotspots. The watch list includes areas where armed groups such as the NPA are currently operating in. Outgoing AFP Chief of Staff General Rey Leonardo Guerrero maintains that the New People's Army is a terrorist group. Guerrero said, the terrorist tag placed by the government on the CPP-NPA is not merely propaganda. He explained that the NPA's acts of threatening civilians, extorting businesses, and burning private property are terroristic activities. CPP founding chair Jose Maria Sison had urged the government to remove the terrorist tag on the communist group as a condition to restart peace talks. Guerrero, however, said the CPP NPA should be sincere and stop at its attacks, especially on innocent civilians. Still to come, the Department of Tourism pushes to meet its 7.4 million tourist arrival goal despite the closure of Boracay. Surigao del Sur NFA rice stocks run out. These and more when the PNA Newsroom continues. Baraka environmental violation. Tax reform for acceleration and inclusion of trade. The Department of Tourism is looking to tap other destinations to compensate for the closure of Boracay and reach its 7.4 million tourist arrival target. Here is our report. The Department of Tourism will maintain its goal of meeting its target of 7.4 million tourist arrivals this year despite the closure of Boracay. Tourism Secretary Wanda Teo said Boracay's temporary closure, despite being a popular destination, does not mean an end to the tourism industry. Teo bared that Boracay only attracts some 980,000 tourists, unlike Cebu, which lured 2.2 million international visitors. DOT continues to push for new and underrated destinations in the country. It also aims to further promote farm and faith tourism sectors. Aside from Coron in Palawan, Bohol and Cebu, Teo said that there are other ideal beaches in Siargao, Samal, and Pagudpud. 
The DOT is also positioning the Philippines for sports and adventure tourism with the hosting of the World's Strongest Man this April to May, the Ironman Challenge, and other sports-related events. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Janice Cave. DPWH Secretary Mark Villar said he will support any measures of transparency to monitor the progress of infrastructure projects. Villar said the DPWH has in fact implemented its own software monitoring system with a built-in geotagging feature to detect ghost projects, particularly in far-flung areas of the country. Villar said the system called Project and Contract Management Procedures and Application is now 90% into its implementation with certain parts of the projects accessible to the public. He said the DPWH will be using analytics to make the monitoring of projects more efficient through the help of satellite imaging. He said President Duterte has stressed the importance of transparency in all transactions in the government. Senator Ralph Recto earlier proposed to make the rehabilitation of Marawi and Boracay as the pilot areas of a new government project that uses drones, satellite imaging, and other cutting-edge technology to monitor their progress. NFA rice in Surigao del Sur will be temporarily out of stock for at least a month due to delays in importation. NFA Provincial Manager May Sara Atomar said their last delivery to accredited retailers was made on Friday, April 13. Except for the 100 sacks of rice set aside for the Bureau of Jail Management and Penology, all three NFA warehouses in the province had been out of stock since the time. The NFA chief, however, assured that commercial rice remains available in the market. Based on regular monitoring, Atomar said that the modal price of regular milled, well-milled, and premium commercial rice were tagged at 41, 45, and 50 pesos per kilo respectively. In the meantime, the NFA is standing by the arrival of imported rice in May. DSWD Western Visayas has opened a crisis intervention unit in Boracay to assist Antiqueños who would be displaced by the island's closure come April 26. The local government unit of Malay, which covers Boracay Island, has an ongoing validation of workers who would be displaced by the six-month shutdown. The crisis unit is located at Barangay Balabag and is operating on a 24-7 basis. Melrose Amaran, head of the DSWD Provincial Office in Antique, encourages affected workers to undergo validation for the eventual referral to the DSWD and its field offices. Amaran reports that so far, nobody affected by the closure has asked for assistance at the DSWD Antique office. She added that the DSWD is preparing to open an operations center in Malay and in Boracay in case a state of calamity will be declared. The Bicol region plays second in the list of hotspots for this year's elections following the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao. PNP Bicol spokesperson Police Senior Inspector Maria Luisa Kalubakib said 666 barangays, mostly in Masbate, were reported as election hotspots. The report corrected PNP spokesman John Bulalakao's statement, citing Bicol as the top-ranked region with 1,245 hotspot villages. Masbate has always been tagged as an election hotspot due to political rivalries and the proliferation of loose firearms and armed groups. ARMM tops the watch list with 832 barangays, while Central Luzon is in third place with 500. Four. Up next, Malacanang recognizes a Filipino journalist who won a Pulitzer Prize for his reportage on the war on drugs. President Duterte awards the Medal of Honor to 42 remaining members of the SAF 44. These and more when the PNA Newsroom returns. Baraka environmental violation. Tax reform for acceleration and inclusion of trade.
Aside from expressways, we will also build more bridges to serve as alternate routes to major roads. All of which adds up to the realization of our key programs, which will usher in the golden age of infrastructure. Because the more we build, the faster we move forward. This is the Philippines that we have started building and will continue to build. Malacanang on Tuesday congratulated Filipino journalist Manuel Mogato for receiving the Pulitzer Prize for his reportage on the Duterte administration's campaign against illegal drugs. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque, however, maintained that the drug war is legitimate since the Reuters series painted a bloody picture of the drug crackdown in the country. Roque explained that the killings committed by law enforcement authorities will be defended by the government as long as they were done in the performance of duty. However, he stressed that unjustified killings, such as the death of 17-year-old Kian Loy de los Santos in a drug operation in Caloocan City, will not go unpunished. Mogato shared the Pulitzer Prize for international reporting with fellow Reuters correspondents Claire Baldwin and Andrew R.C. Marshall. The Department of Transportation now encourages commuters to pay for MRT and LRT tickets using the newly issued coins of the Banco Central ng Pilipinas. The DOTR said the new generation currency coins are now usable in ticket vending machines at the LRT Line 1, Line 2, and MRT 3. This means ticket machines now recognize the new 1 peso, 5 peso, and 10 peso coins. The machines have been undergoing recalibration since January following the issuance of the new coins. A Bicolana bagged the first gold medal in the Palarong Pambansa 2018. Leslie De Lima took the top spot in the 3,000-meter steeplechase after beating Camila Tobiano of Northern Mindanao in a close race. Grace Tejones of Western Visayas took the bronze medal. Meanwhile, Anne Kitoy of Western Visayas not only dethroned Sylvian Abunda as the secondary girls javelin throw champ, but also shattered her existing record. Kitoy's throw went 45.72 meters, way longer than the previous record of 42.85 set by Abunda last year in Antique. Meanwhile, Sok Sargent dominated the Palaro early with its Arnis team earning six gold medal wins as of Tuesday. The 12-year-old ace Arnisadores Princess Cheryl Valdez emerged as the most bemedaled athlete after winning four gold medals in individual and team events, while Al Carioto captured two in individual events. Three years after their gallant sacrifice, President Rodrigo Duterte conferred the Medal of Honor to 42 members of the Special Action Force who fell in Mama Sapano. Here is our report. Saying better late than never, President Rodrigo Duterte conferred the highest Philippine National Police Awards to the remaining 42 of the 44 Special Action Force troopers who died in a failed Mama Sapano operation in 2015. In an awarding ceremony held in Malacanang, the Commander-in-Chief led a presentation of the PNP Medal of Valor and Magalong Medals to the families of the 42 SAF troopers. Duterte said the SAF 44 are worthy of being called heroes because of their extraordinary display of bravery. Duterte said the death of the commandos may be one of the darkest and saddest parts of the country's history, which nevertheless proved their commitment to their sworn duty to protect the nation from terror and violence.
It is my hope that this recognition of other interrogate our police officers and military personnel to perform their duties with utmost dedication, excellence, loyalty, and love of country. Duterte assured that his administration will continue to pursue welfare assistance for the families they left. Most importantly, he assured that justice will be served for them. The 44 elite forces of the PNP were part of the 55th and 84th Special Action Company tasked to serve the warrant of arrest against Malaysian terrorist Zulkifli bin Hill, alias Marwan, and his Filipino cohort Basit Usman in Mamasapano, Maguindanao on January 25, 2015. Former President Benigno Aquino III conferred the Medal of Valor to only two SAF members, Senior Inspector Gedna Tabdi and Police Officer to Romeo Sempron, three months after the deadly operation. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Ben Shbondo. Let's now check out the weather forecast for Metro Manila and the rest of the country. Let's take another look at today's top stories. The Department of Justice begins its probe on the tax evasion charges against Rappler. The Philippine National Police asserts readiness against threats by the New People's Army this coming Barangay and SK elections. The Department of Tourism pushes to meet its 7.4 million tourist arrival goal despite the closure of Boracay. And Malacanang recognizes a Filipino journalist who won a Pulitzer Prize for his reportage on the war on drugs. Thank you for watching another episode of the PNA Newsroom. To check out these and other stories, visit the PNA website or follow the Philippine News Agency on Facebook and Twitter. For more stories about the government and how it serves the Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. And remember, the happiest people are not those who have everything they want, but those who make do with what they have. Remember that next time you're sad. And that's your daily dose of the latest news and information from the PNA Newsroom. I'm William Theo. Good day.